Alrighty, uh, this video is going to be for uh, Fearless Front. This is a video response to his uh, tractor or racing mower uh, tractor build 13 part 2, I believe he called it. Um, basically, it's in reference to the part of the video where he's making the diamond plate um, belt covers and he you know, put the brackets and everything on the frame and then uh, drilled the holes in the brackets, but he didn't know where to drill the holes in the uh, diamond plate. The way he did the holes in the diamond plate was uh, he had to mark it from behind, which generally, yeah, of course it works just fine. Um, but his uh, belt clutch drive assembly there was uh, right in the way because it's right up tight against it, so he had to remove all that and he almost had to remove the motor. Well, that's uh, that's wasting time, big time. I mean, that's a lot of unnecessary work. And uh, so basically, this is just uh, going to be a quick little educational video to uh, you know give Fearless Front the idea for if he ever comes into the situation again. And hopefully, it also uh, might help uh, a couple people here and there along the lines. Up six degrees, December twentieth. It is a beautiful day, and uh, still no snow in sight. Alrighty guys, well, welcome to my uh, messy bench here. Um, now, what I've done here is replicated Fearless Front's frame for his uh, racing mower. Basically, just one corner here. Now, on his frame, uh, it's obviously longer both ways. He has a mount here, and he would have another one of these. That looks pretty much the same. You know, say, sitting here, and exactly the same on the other side. But the method I'm going to show you works the same no matter where this uh, this hole is. So he got his frame together, he welded on his uh, mount for his diamond plate. This is diamond plate. Well, we're going to pretend it is. It's actually a heat shield off of my Murray tractor that I cut up. And uh, so it's going to sit here. As you see, we've got no hole. It, you know it's got to be in this general area somewhere, but... We don't know where exactly. Now keep in mind he had his uh, belt and clutch and everything uh, really close behind it so he wasn't able to get in there with a, a marker. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to basically find out exactly where to drill the hole in this piece of metal without having to mark it from behind and get it lined up perfectly. So now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find a square. Alrighty, so here I got my square, that's my perfect 90, which it's hard to line up because of my weld bead there, but if I lay that flat on there, it's uh, pretty damn good. Now, the method I'm about to show you doesn't, this doesn't need to be a perfect 90 anyways, so even if you say, well maybe the frame's not uh, uh, on a perfect 90, doesn't matter because all we're working with is this piece of metal and this mount. First thing you want to do is find the center of the hole you just drilled or better yet before you drill this hole I'm using this because this hole is already made in this piece of material that I welded on but uh, better yet before you mark that hole you simply get level line it and I'm just going to mark it with a grease pen so we're going to get make sure we're square here. Alrighty guys, so I used my square and I got my hole perfectly centered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this line here and we're going to transfer it, keep it nice and straight, transfer it right over to this part of the frame here. Alrighty, just we used our square for that. And we're going to do the same with the other one, the other line here. Your square can obviously be longer than this one. For some reason this just happens to be absolutely perfect. So it's going to lay flat there and line up there and you're going to transfer that mark right there. So now we have our mark on the lower part and the upper part of the frame. 
You guys might be sitting there thinking, what the hell does this have to do with anything? Well, let me show you. Let me show you on our uh, replica diamond plate. What we're going to do is set our plate into position, and then we clamp it in, into position. We go back to lining up our square with the mark that we made. There's our line. What we're do is, now what we're going to do is draw our line. For this part you don't want to use a sharpie if you're using nice expensive diamond plate. And because this square isn't quite long enough I just gotta use it as a ruler and extend it that line a little bit further. Now like I said, for this part if you're using a nice diamond plate you don't want to use a sharpie. Using a grease pen would be a better idea. It's not going to scratch the surface and it's easy to clean off. Just wipes off with a little bit of uh, alcohol or uh, Windex, whatever you got handy. Next, take your square again and you're going to line it up square with your other part of the frame here. Line up your lines Sure, we're close here. It's hard to do. The, like I said, it is hard to do with a grease pen, so don't screw it up. Alrighty. Now, see how that all worked. And right where your intersection there is where you drill your hole. Okay, we've got our replica diamond plate and I have drilled the hole in our intersection that we made. Now I gotta switch hands here. And voila, lines up perfectly. Let me go grab a nut and bolt. And with the nut and bolt installed, as you can see, everything lines up perfectly. Well, Mr. Fearless Front, I hope that helps you out, and keep up making the great videos.